Sean Strickland is a bad man, and I think it's easy to say I give up when I have a finger halfway lodged down my eyeball. We just saw that, right, last week with Justin Taffa. You get a nasty eye poke, you can call it quits. He mentioned in the post-fight presser, AJ, how impressed were you about this, or just what were your thoughts? He mentioned in the post-fight presser, yeah, I almost was all like, yeah, I'm going to take the, the easy way out right here. I'm going to take the coward's way out. But I heard y'all guys talking in the crowd and all that. And I was like, you know what? I got to give it to him. That's the type of guy Strickland is, at least the persona. I mean, what did you make of all that? The the one thing you got to love about Sean Strickland is he is always himself, unapologetically unabashed. And that is really his truest form coming out after the fight. Always with Sean Strickland's post-fight press conferences. They're a little less wild than his pre-fight pressers, but it's because he's trying to stir up that storm, and then you see his true self after the fact, and that's really him. He does have a lot of pride in himself and you know all the, all the things he stands behind, so you got to love that, man. You got to yeah. support it, and we've all been there when you're in a fight, sitting there, and you're like, do I really want to do this? Good thing Sean Strickland, he's a man of his word, and he knuckles up. Now, let's talk about the actual fight, right? So, Abu Smagomedov, he came out hot. That teep kick was looking nice. He was looking sharp, just like how he did in his last fight against Dustin Stoltzfus, right? Came out sharp, hot, heavy. And Strickland, just kind of reading the patterns, right? Okay, all right, you gave me a little something. I'm going to just kind of, you know, hand fight a little bit, play this, play that. After the eye poke... In a weird twist of events, it felt like Magomedov almost was a little more rattled than Strickland was. Like, Strickland turned it into, all right, let's go. Come on, bro. I got one eye, double vision. I'm just going to go scrap, right? What do you think that is? Do you think that's just countless rounds from Sean Strickland? Or do you think that Magomedov was like, okay, now I got to really think because if my hands are outstretched, I'm going to lose a point. That was a hard warning. Like, I feel like those things can get to you, especially the fight hasn't even started yet. Like, you know, you haven't warmed up to each other. What do you think? I think uh, it's a little mixture of both. I mean, Sean Strickland, rounds after rounds after rounds. This dude down to fight anybody. He's seen it all, done it all. So that right there adds a big swath to the Sean Strickland uh, canvas. But Magomedov, what I think happened right there, he sees Sean Strickland not get demoralized with the eye poke. He sees the big shots that are that he's throwing that normally have a big effect on people. And Sean Strickland, like you said, just hand fighting, just blocking things, reading things, looking nice out there, seeing them before they hit, and then still being in your face. I think that really demoralized Magomedov, and you saw it happen, especially in the second round where he just started, mm-hmm. instead of throwing anything back, he just started shelling up, curling down, looking up at the clock, turning away. That demoralization, I think, really started to turn the tide for Sean Strickland. What do you think? Yeah, no, that's a fair point. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it is the classic time-tested approach of Sean Strickland that says – you can be really tough for this first round. You can have, he won the first round. He got the takedown. He's like, you could be really tough for this first round, but I'm going to go at the same methodical pace all five rounds. And if you can't match my pace, you're going to start getting tired. You're going to start breaking and I'm going to be right there in your face. And that's where it was, right? He crunched the offense. He crunched the space of Magomedov. So those big kicks and the big explosive attacks couldn't get off. Next thing you know, I mean, bro, running backwards, backpedaling, it's tiring, man. So you're sitting there backwards. Now you hit the cage. Oh, shoot, I have nowhere else to go. And Strickland, I think the most impressive part, man, and this is what we see it over and over again, but he doesn't load up. He's just like, all right, I'm just going to pepper, 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 pepper. And then when Magomedov started crumbling, that's when he put the big shots on. So it really did feel like this could have been just a conventional sparring session for Sean Strickland. But that goes to show there's levels to this game, and that's kind of the point that I was trying to make in the pre-show. So what did you learn about Magomedov um, from this matchup? He's He is the real deal, Derek. This guy has a future in the UFC. He has a future in the sport. But like you said, there's levels to this game, and if Magomedov can work on the in-betweens of the flash that he has, because he has power, he has flash, he has the technique he done, but the in-betweens, the, the calmness, the clarity that is provided with those rounds and rounds and mm-hmm. rounds and rounds of sparring – that's where we're going to see this dude grow. And that's really what I learned. He's still still a little green to be facing one of the top 10 in the division. You know what? I would agree with you. I think he's like, what, 29 years old? Dude got like 40 mm-hmm. fights on his record. Like, give my man another opportunity. You feel me? Let's not give him the Sean Strickland. Let's give him someone a little bit lower, but a little higher than Stoltzfus. Um, this is the big point that I wanted to bring here, man. I think we all owe Sean Strickland an apology. Everybody who was not on the train of... 
Um, if Magomedov tries to grapple with him, Sean Strickland would be uh, hopeless, right? Like, everybody that was on that train, y'all need to all apologize. Because this is what I was saying. This dude is a black belt. He just decides not to use the grappling. So when we got to some of those scenarios where Magomedov was trying to break out the wrestling and Sean Strickland did, like, the most technical, conventional, just stand back up, break the grip, get back out in space. Come on, man. This is, leads to my next question here. What is the next move for Sean Strickland? Does he get lucky and able to kind of slip through the cracks in the matchmaking to where he gets an Izzy shot? No, I don't think they're going to give him <laughs> Izzy there. Unfortunately, I still think Sean Strickland's going to get a little bit of the shaft in that aspect. Uh, there, I don't think there's much draw for that fight. Is uh, Sean Strickland, I think we give him somewhere in the top five, somewhere working his way up. And it's hard because the whole, the whole uh, division is a little stagnant. So I can see why he had to fight so deep in the in the pool of uh, Abus Magomedov. I don't know, though, Derek. I was trying to think of a name that would really come up in the uh, in the division. And I don't really have anything that's clamoring. Do you? Paulo Costa. How about that? That'd be fun. All right. Ooh. I think it'd be fun. I, I think that that's uh, two guys who are fun talkers who will really get down, and it's a serious power jujitsu on Costa side. And then Strickland, like I said, it's just the nonstop pepper you down. And Paulo Costa likes to be or is willing to be lured into a scrap as well. I don't think that's a massive outreach on either side. I think it's a very good fight and it would be a very close fight as well. Now, let me just pull this up real quick just so I can kind of uh, maybe see a little bit. Well, Paulo Costa, uh, if he has something locked up, Paulo Costa... All right, well, that's going to take a little bit longer. So while we tread on this, AJ, just give us one last point while I go look this up. Man, I think the biggest the biggest takeaway I have from this whole fight, Derek, is you cannot discount the consistency that Sean Strickland fights at. He is he's composed, calm, and when he's in that kind of chaos, he's able to maintain that calmness and really push forward. I had a buddy at work, one of the one of the upper management guys, talking to me. He's like, "I think Sean Strickland's going to absolutely put it to this guy." And for a second, you know that that kind of it's like, yeah, I mean, I can see how Sean Strickland would do that. But what impressed me most, yeah, he did put it to this guy, but he stayed consistently and will always be that same kind of style of fighter. Did you pull it up, Derek? I got it. I got it. No, you're right on that point. That is, that is the the tried and true aspect of Sean Strickland until it doesn't work like against Alex Paeta, but neither here nor there. Um, yeah, so I forgot, man. Paulo Costa, he's actually matched up with Ikram Alaskerov, and I don't know if you remember that guy, but he he's my man. I think he just knocked out Phil Hawes. Um, yep, it was Ikram. Yeah, he knocked out Phil Hawes. This is a grappler dude who just came out and just knocked his socks off, man. So, uh, yeah, middleweight, it's booked up. Maybe he finds himself in another dilemma where they won't give him a fight for a while. Either way, big win by Sean Strickland in the main event. All 